The cunning condition in the grindings are characterized by the very high speed and very small cut size compared to the milling and other traditional machining operations. The preferred speed of the grinding wheel is determined by the rotational speed of the wheel and its diameter. Depth of the cut is called the infeed, is the penetration of the wheel below the original work surface. As the penetration proceeds, the grinding wheel is fed literally across the surface of each pass by the work. It's called the cross feed. And it determines the width of the grinding path W. The width multiplied by the depth, P, it will determine the cross sectional area of the cut. In most grinding operations, the work will pad the wheel and a certain work speed PW and is the material removal rate can be calculated accordingly. Each grain in the grinding wheel cuts an individual chip whose longitudinal shape before the cutting and whose assumed across angular shape is going to be a triangular. At the exit points of the grid from the work, where the chip cross section is the largest, this triangular has the high T and the width W prime. In grinding operation, we are interested in how the cutting conditions combine with the grinding wheel parameters to affect the surface finish, the forces and the energy, the temperature of the work surface, and the wheel wheel. Most grinding operations are performed to achieve a good surface finish. The best surface finish is achieved by, first, using the small grain sizes. Second, use a higher wheel speeds. Third, using a dense wheel structure. If the force required to drive the work past the grinding wheel were known, the specific energy in the grinding wheel could be determined as Cu. In grinding, the specific energy is much greater than the conventional machining. There are several reasons for this. First, the size effect in the machining. Second, the individual grain in the grinding wheel poses extremely negative freak angle. Third, the specific energy is higher in the grinding because not all the individual grids are engaged in the actual cutting. There are three types of grain action can be recognized. First, the cutting, but the grid projects far enough into the surface to form a chip, and then the material is removed. We have the plowing, or the grid projects into the work, but not far enough to cut. In that case, the surface is deformed and the energy is going to be consumed, but no material is going to be removed. Finally, we have the rubbing, where the grid contacts the surface, but only rubbing diffraction occurs, which consume energy, but no material is going to be removed. The size effect with the negative freak angle and the ineffective grain actions combine to make the grinding process inefficient in terms of the energy consumptions per volume of the material removed. Heat is generated in the grinding due to the high friction. The high work based surface temperature can cause damaging effects, including the surface burns and cracks. Some metrical damages can occur immediately beneath the surface. Also, this causes softening of the work surfaces if dehydrated. Also, some residual stresses in the work surface can occur. In order to reduce the grinding temperature, we can decrease the feed, reduce the wheel speed, reduce the number of the active grids per square inches on the grinding wheel increase the work speed, and finally, use the grinding fluid as possible. The grinding wheels wear, just as the conventional cutting tools wear. We have three mechanisms are recognized as the principal cause of the wear in the grinding wheels. First, the grain fracture. Second, the atricious wear. And third, the bond fracture. The grain fracture happen when the portion of the grain breaks off, 
but the rest of the brain remains bonded in the wheel. Thus, the edges of the fractured area become new cutting edges, and tendency for the brain fracture is called the ferrability. For the atricious wheels, the dulling of the individual grains resulting in a flat spots and the bonded edges. Finally, the bond fractures are the individual grains are going to be pulled out of the bonded materials, and this will depend on the wheel grade and among the other factors. Usually, occurs because the grain has become dull due to the attrition wear and resulting in the cutting forces to become excessive. The wheel wear is applied as a function of the volume material removed, rather than as a function of the time. Indicate stops of the wheel wear curves is called the grinding ratio, which is represented as the ratio between the volume of the work material removed and the corresponding volume of the grinding wheel worn. When the wheel is in the third region of the wheel curve, it must be reshaped by a procedure called the dressing. Dressing is a reshaping of the wheel, accomplished by rotating disc, a pressure stick, or another grinding wheel held against the original wheel as it rotates. The function is to break off the dull grits to expose a new sharp grains, also to remove the chips clogged in the wheel. Turning is an alternative procedure that not only sharpen the wheel, but also restore its cylindrical shape to ensure that it is going to be straight across outside the parameter. The process uses a diamond point tool that is going to be fed slowly and depreciously across the wheel as it rotates. A very light depth is going to be taken against the wheel.